All righty, welcome to Spirit Canoe. My name is Bob Gujon. We're here, I don't know, this is about our, I think this is our ninth show. This is, we're turning into veterans here of some kind, although at any rate, on the program this evening, uh, folks from the Appowin Lounge slash Resource Center slash Student Navigator Consulting Service, uh, all around helping out at the college for whatever problems might be popping up by day or night. Anyways, Darby Starrett uh, joins us, Chris Pace, and Bobby Joe Chenier. And uh, so, welcome all. Thank you. Um, so, I guess uh, first thing to, f as my, my rambling introduction suggested, I sort of maybe understand what you guys do. Uh, so, who wants to jump in and say, well, this is what I do. Well, I think all of us, we work in what we call the uh, Nagonawin uh, Aboriginal Student Services uh, within the college. So we work with the Aboriginal students, First Nation students, uh, Métis and Inuit students, who um, come to the college, need help with uh, any uh, of the services, like you said, that they need thrilled to college. Um, we all have uh, backgrounds, special backgrounds. My 20%, 30%, 40% is working with the special needs students. So if they came to us in high school uh, with an IEP, individual education plan, uh, we have those accommodations here at the college. So we can su um, support these students and give them the special accommodations they need to be successful. So, so you have connections then with their high schools? We do have connections with high schools, yeah. When they come into our uh, program, we want to make sure that they bring documentation from high school that can help us sort what they need. Uh, now, it might that be folks here in Thunder Bay, or does that include regional connections you know, as well? It could be regional connections. Any, any of the students up north or uh, any of our um, urban reserves that we have here from Fort William First Station uh, could be from anywhere. So any high school they come from, then uh, we can So are you, do you see yourselves as part of a network then of people that you're constantly in contact We're with? We're absolutely in that work, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Joe, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Since I don't know all this, because uh, I, I know generally what you do as a group, but I don't know what you'd be, be doing as, might as well go around the room here. Well, I guess the majority of the time we all do the same thing, but then again, uh, with my specialization, I work with culture and engagement. So any of the cultural activities, um, working with students in that sense and that inc it also includes uh, student governance so i work with the student council as oh well. i see um, now is there any special student council aspect for aboriginal folks <laughs> i mean there's a stu there's a student organized governance right there is and so when you when you say uh, in so far as the office is is uh, uh concerned primarily with aboriginal students mm -hmm. uh, what's the is there is there an aspect of the student government that addresses uh, Aboriginal issues? Well, there is. They have their own council, actually, OASA, oh, okay. um, and it is primarily with the intention to improve their stay while they're here and while they're students to bring opportunities and experiences to them and to also um, help them provide some learning experiences. So, like, for right now, we're looking at constitutional development, learning how to run as a, as a board, taking skills that they can use when they're finished school and, and use in a workplace or in volunteer. So this is outside the classroom? Yes. Oh, okay. So you run special sessions then? Or, I mean, that <laughs> almost sounds like you're, you're teaching them constitutional <laughs> law and organization and stuff, which I, I mean... Well, we're doing a little bit of it, but right now the so council... So they have separate classes, in a sense, or...? Uh, well, no, it's eight people who are elected to the council. Oh, the, oh, the council. And they right, run okay. as that, and then what they want to do is take those resources and make them available, and they're hoping to, at some point, themselves as a council, lead presentations with oh, the other okay. students so hmm. that they'll have that skill set. Now, this is kind of interesting because... Uh, I teach a course in which organizational issues kick in, and one of the things I'm interested in, because we all have Aboriginal learning objectives, right? And so one of the interesting things that I'm hoping to explore um, is how an Indigenous organization would be different from those pyramids that kind of came across the ocean 500 years ago, right? And then are still kind of mm -hmm. here, which kind of outlines the way the college is organized. But So I'm kind of always curious how the people of the circle, as opposed to the people of the pyramid, uh, you know, interact. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just kind of curious, is there any issues like that, if I'm that little thumbnail description, <laughs> uh, that, that in other words you're, you're dealing with um, issues of governance that from an indigenous perspective, does that, is that, is that just a, a strange organization of words or is there that actually meaningful that you said, okay, we want to deal with uh, issues of governance from an indigenous perspective? Mm -hmm. 
Well, in that sense, we do actually, we try to function a little bit differently. You can't always, it's not always the most feasible thing, but um, we do try to um, operate with consensus as opposed to a majority vote. Um, if we don't have consensus, we work around the table to hopefully come to that point. Um, so sometimes decisions take a little bit longer. There's a mm -hmm. lot more discussion and input put in. Right. Um, and we're working with... Uh, yeah, that, that reminds me of that. Uh, I took a course at, at LU the, uh, a couple of years ago, and they decided to <coughs> that we would do a group exam. And then we would have, we'd all get together in the course of a three-hour period and try to arrive at a consensus. <laughs> um, and the, the, fir the, the, the primary lesson I learned from that experience is we don't know how to do that. <laughs> Very hard to do. Well, first of all, it, it, it takes a lot more than three hours. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, something was just tossed together at the end, and it was an interesting experience. But as I say, I think the thing that I learned was, mm, okay, I, we don't really have the cultural tools for figuring out how to do this, so it would require a different mm -hmm. cultural base to come from. People have to come with a set of, kind of, if you like, a toolkit of cultural uh, experiences and, and uh, ways of thinking and interacting, and yeah, it's going to take a lot longer to arrive at a consensus rather than just having somebody who's the boss make up the mi make up his or her mind, right? Mm -hmm. So, Darby. Hi. Uh, <laughs> your name came up when I, w during the Mad at Easy, people said, well, Darby, talk to Darby. Darby's Mad at Easy, Mad at Easy is Darby. If I, did, did I get that kind of <laughs> correct or wrong? Or? Um, Darby or maybe Darby. Was <laughs> she was the lead, she was the one. I was absolutely. the lead from the That's college. What, yeah, no, I really from, the from, college, the, from the college, but it was a joint effort. Yeah, yeah. Among us, she was the lead for sure. Yeah, oh, okay. I was uh, at most of the meetings, I guess, but Chris obviously was also very involved, and Bobby Joe hadn't joined us yet, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, my specialty, the 20%, so as they were saying, our jobs are divided, 80% of our workload is the same, oh, okay. case management, working with students, um, homework help, um, connecting them with resources, that kind of thing. And then my 20% specialty is recruitment. So um, I'm formerly a high school teacher, so I have that connection with the high schools and I go into the schools in the city, but I also get to travel up north mm. often. Mm. Yeah. So wh how, how, how long, so Bobby Joe has just joined? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've met the college for about five years now. As part of this? Uh, no, I just started in January um, oh, okay. with Appuin. Right. And I've been involved with Appian over the years, different different roles, different um, jobs within the college, but primarily with our Aboriginal students. Okay. Yeah. And I, yourself? I, think I started in November, which I think it's important oh. to point out our positions weren't here until November oh, of last okay. year. So, so is Appian fairly new? Um, I'm Appian only at the college a couple of years myself. No, Appian's App evolved from, from a small space. There was once um, on, on this floor, is at one time in student success, and it was tucked away in the corner. So they put us back in the corner and just say, hey, let's put you so over So the here. concept was kind of there. The concept was always there, absolutely. A place for Aboriginal students to come, to gather, to sit, to, re to relax, to get to know each other, to talk, to do homework. So after that, we moved to the third floor, and again, same, a little bit bigger space, a little bit nicer space, but now finally we're here in the main floor, in the main building, all in the open for everyone to see. So it's been, it's been a great uh, experience in watching that expand, and we're hoping with us that it expands even more. Now, was there any, at any time, any connection? I'm also aware that there was the Learning Cafe over in Fort William. Now, the, the reason I mention it is, I don't know if there was any connection with the, you guys, me a small amount. I was at the, the reason I say is that the concept seems similar. The idea that you want a, a, a f an informal cultural space in which people enter, if you like, the college environment. Yeah, that's a that's a great way of saying it. Absolutely. Yeah, the Learning Cafe was was in one area of town. We brought the same concept uh, right here in the college. Mm -hmm. And and uh, is it your sense that that's that's an, an indigenous way of approaching things? That, that this is. I mean, I'll, on the other hand, I suppose anybody would enjoy having those sorts of services, but the the, the fact that it's specific, specifically for Indigenous students, um, what, what's the uh, what's I mean, the story? We, there? I mean, Appleton likes to welcome everyone, so of we of course uh, we, we like to welcome everyone. But yeah, this is this for our students. Um, our students have unique needs, and 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 we want to make sure that we can help those needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess the I guess the, the the thought is it's more than just a lounge. It's not. I mean, because mm -hmm. that's what I'm kind of getting at. Is on the one hand, you know, all of these institutions. I mean, I've been at universities and colleges, mm -hmm. and they often have a lounge, and it's really just a bunch of 
chairs and desks mm-hmm. and whatever, or just a place to hang out. But you guys are obviously no, a lot more focused than that. Absolutely. As soon as they brought in the navigators, as soon as they brought in us, that's when things changed. Before it was a lounge, a place to sit, oh, have coffee. Okay. Now there's workstations. Now they have us for that support, academic support. They'll come to us in the office. They'll sit down with us. We'll wor- work through their coursework. If they have any other issues, um, maybe social issues, housing issues, child care uh, issues, they'll come to us. We help them navigate through the city, through the college, and mm-hmm. they'll come to you know, something that would help them out. So what are those relationships outside the college? Then you mentioned the high school and that. Is there others, the housing and so uh, on? We work closely with the funders as well, like NNEC, Matawa, different communities, uh, Fort William First Nation, Yambatoon, um, anybody that's located in the city, obviously. Uh, those are definitely some of the partnerships. Um, obviously, we keep in contact with the Friendship Centre and Mishkiki and uh, mm. the Aboriginal Liaison Office with the city. So there's really a whole network of resources in Thunder Bay and then also outside of Thunder Bay that we so try to stay connected with. So it sounds to me like you're probably the key networking, one of the key, if not the key networking operation in the college for the, those external relationships. I think we try to be. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, we also have well, CPAL that's working uh, yeah. with those organizations well, let me, as let well. Me put it <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, as I mentioned off, off the top, we've had, this is about the ninth show, so that network you just described is what the show is supposed to be. <laughs> and I think, oh, you are the guys I should have been talking to from the beginning because yeah. it sounded like you have all those connections. We're still working on some, but, but our backgrounds, we all bring connections to hear, like I said, I worked for NNEC and I've also worked for Matawa. What, what was so NNEC? NNEC is Nishina- or Northern Anishinaabe Education Council. Okay. So uh, Dennis Franklin Cromarty, that's an NNEC school, but they also fund the post-secondary students. Oh, so that's a funding. Mm-hmm. That's a body? funding agency, and it also runs high schools within the city and outside of the city. It runs them. DFC is a NNEC-run school. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So it's not. It's, so that's separate from the Ministry of Education. Then? It's a federally funded school. A federally? Oh, see, I didn't know about that. Mm-hmm. So tell us, can you talk a little bit more about just the general? Cause, <laughs> well, the reason I'm, uh, well, it's news, right? I know, I'm not sure everybody out there understands that okay. probably thought uh, Dennis Cromartie's school, Franklin Cromartie, is just another high school as part of the Ministry of Education. Because um, the assumption is all high schools are run by the province, but this is not the case. No, it's inspected by the province, and um, it's federally funded. Um, same curriculum, everything like that. Oh, okay. Um, so the curriculum comes from the ministry. Yeah, they're, they're oh, okay. ministry inspected. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just the dollars, and it, it services oh. students from the north, specifically. Right. right. Yeah. So that's its specific mandate. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Are there any other schools similar mm-hmm. in town? The Metal Learning Center. Okay, I'm aware of it. I've never been. It's a smaller scale high school, and it services the Metawa community. So that's more of the northeastern. Oh, okay. Treaty 9 communities. Oh, okay. Right. And then there's Oshki, which yeah. I still haven't quite, in my mind, figured out. So well, that's a, is that a trades oriented? Oshki is a post-secondary program. Right. Um, we do have a, a program in partnership with them. Uh, the idea behind Oshki is that they come part-time so they can still reside in the community and okay. come out for, I think it's two weeks at a time. So oh, okay. That's two what Oshki weeks. is. Yeah. Uh, we do our personal support worker with Oshki. We partner with them for that right. one too. So there is quite a few relationships you kind of have to keep nursing. Mm-hmm. There's lots more, I'm sure, that we can <laughs> find. Like we're still, so you and guys we haven't are, been here for a year yet, right, so we're still yes. navigating that aspect. Right, right, right. Well, you need you should navigate through this show <laughs> <laughs> on a regular, because it sounds like the people you're trying to connect to are the kind of the people, some of the people that the show is trying to, you know, build relationships and have people feel that this is a space they can come on and talk about their stories, mm-hmm. whatever they might be. Speaking of which, what are, so what are the, what are the, the, the things you've, in the course of the, the past year or so, that sort of, the, the stories you say, oh, this is, didn't I think this was going to happen, or, <laughs> you know, the, the crazy things, the funny things, the... Well, I can, what's, see, what's I, I can see one thing from the start, since uh, my time here in, in the last four or five years uh, with AppyWin and, you know, where the students are utilizing our space, yes. they're utilizing, utilizing our services. Hmm. Before it was happening, it was small, 
And now we're well, building. That's what Darby said before the show, that yeah. it's gotten quite a bit busier oh, this it's, year. It's, it's building. I mean, I had to put concealer on my eyes because I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, it, it's growing. We're busy. The students are utilizing us. We're in the classrooms. We're, we're, in, we're getting out into the schools. We have our our um, marketing campaign out there and and the students know of our services so but it, as Darby said it is voluntary so that they have to come forward is that correct mm -hmm. that they do have to yeah. yep they um, do have to come sometimes instructors might suggest it as part of a agreement you know if you you're on academic probation go down and visit the Appu and staff but actually I haven't had that yet this year so we're getting a few I mean yeah. we're, we're just we're starting to build those relationships with our faculty to say mm -hmm. like, hey let's come on bring us into your classroom and let's talk about the services we can provide and, and hopefully your students will come down. Mm -hmm. Bobby, Joe and I were just in the classroom today just to remind them, it's almost midterms, hey guys, this is when things start to pile up, come on down and if you need help, we can walk you through it. Most of the time they don't really need that help, they just you know, second guess, first year students coming in, right. they just need, hey, am I doing this right, am I doing this okay? And most often than not, they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the other aspect was the cultural. So there's they're kind of the student academic support Mm -hmm. uh, various aspects of that but then so in terms of culture uh, there was some ad I, you mentioned it that's why I'm looking at you <laughs> um, the uh, uh, so what does that so you put you put on events and various yeah, things like the Mad at Easy was that part of the cultural thing or um, that's that's actually kind of student orientation as well right yeah well we say it's culture and engagement pieces so some of the engagement pieces obviously have a cultural component and others are just for fun, like we're having a movie night on Friday. Um, Medadizy was a joint effort with, um, we meet with other post-secondary counselors in the city, and uh, that was a student orientation with a bit of a cultural spin on it, I would say. Um, it was for Aboriginal students. So. so what do you see as a cultural goal for APO in terms of, is it is it a case of um, mm. creating a uh, cultural space for Indigenous students, but you also see perhaps providing or creating a cultural space at the college itself that's that's available for everyone in a sense. It is both and I think in terms of uh, the Aboriginal students and the people that frequent our lounge most often probably it's uh, to kind of bring some of the components of home mm -hmm. here to make it a comfortable place a safe place something um, where they can just get that connection because a lot of our students are f well far removed from their home and their communities and, and the people that that they associate with their culture. So um, to have someone or an event where they can eat traditional food or speak the language or have an elder who can tell stories or you know, even just to sit and have tea and talk with somebody and, and, and get that kind of feedback back and forth, it, it makes it a, a better place to be sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it sometimes just I helps them focus. I was almost gonna bring a Scrabble board. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, that's what I was thinking, we could have a Scrabble board and we could I was going to call it Ojibabble. <laughs> well, I got that. I took that. That's not me. That was from uh, Elmer Baxter, who taught me Ojibwe a couple of years ago. Okay. So, and that was his term. I wasn't. But at any rate, yeah. Uh, but aside from that, we bring elders in. Uh, there's elders come in three days a week. Um, and sometimes there's activities associated with that. Sometimes they're not. Um, you know, Tuesday we have Bannock, an elder brings in Bannock every Tuesday, and, and that's a popular day. Mm -hmm. um, then we have other days where it's associated with a craft, some beading or making moccasins or, or something like that, and it's just a very relaxing and calm thing to do and bring into an atmosphere that's really very busy and very high stress. Well, I guess this is that's the key for everybody, is it is a, the school, unfortunately, I, I, I keep telling my students, well, you know, it's, uh, learning should be fun. <laughs> and trying not to stress them out, right? Because mm -hmm. as the work, especially as the term goes on and it gets busier and busier and the work starts piling up, uh, which I gather, again, for people coming from out of town, from a different community, this can be a bit of a, woo. Well, a lot of our students are coming from the north and, and you know, the towns that we know and live in, there's, there's more students in, you know, in the college and there's a whole community and, and coming mm -hmm. from a fly-in remote and seeing all these people and they're different people, it can obviously, yeah, it's, it's definitely Yeah, especially, I, that's true, if you're coming from a small community, you, you've known everybody since you were you're old enough to remember. I lived in a community that had one stop sign and no street lights. And, you know, imagine trying to catch a city transit, you know, when mm -hmm. you come here for your first day of school. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why we're here, to help navigate that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so what's on the agenda for what's coming up? 
that you're... Well, how much time you got? <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I just, my computer, just, I thought I said it so it wouldn't do this, but I'll have to, I'll, I'll let you know in, we have 40 minutes left. <laughs> yeah, oh, 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 there, there go. Oh, the 40 oh, minutes. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, we're, like you said, we're, we're starting off, we're new, we have a great team here, and, and we'll, you know, every day we're planning on saying, oh, let's try something, what can we try, mm -hmm. what we can get started. And yeah, there's there's a lot of things going on. I'll let someone else take that for, for there you go. We'll, well go around the room. What's coming okay. up? Well a couple of the bigger things I guess, aside from the the weekly schedule that we keep, um, we're looking at developing or planning for a I guess a trade show of all the resources available in Thunder Bay. And we're gonna gear it of course to Aboriginal services, but so oh, sorry, so that there are trade show. Well, we're going to have booths, booths set up with, with different booths, organizations. Right. Oh, We're inviting them like to come in and just meet. <coughs> and like a job fair? Um, or just a no, more just services. Things that are available here. Oh, things that are available. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and we're going to do that again because they get some of it at the beginning of the year and with orientation, but, you know, they, Maybe a little too they move busy away. At that time, yeah. right? It's a bit of a flurry of. I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too, yeah so we're going to do that as a refresher and especially mm. with the holidays coming up. and and people are going to be busy and so what services would typically be likely to candidates oh. yeah. <laughs> ones we already mentioned probably oh, well. like yeah. the friendship center Mishkiki, oh, okay. uh, the city of so thunder bay right so um. what what so what would be I mean, again i don't know that everybody out there who might be listening would appreciate what all of these organizations do like if so what's the the connection with the friendship center what's what, for example what's what's their role they have the all sorts of programs running in the city uh, for families, um, for parents. Um, sometimes they even have funding through the Friendship Centre. They have all kinds of cultural workshops. And uh, different events. Different events, yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I should get over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you or should. I should get them. <laughs> I have to hop on my, this is how it happens. I hop on my bicycle, I go, and, gee, we think I'd like to come on a show. And it's, it's, it's a slow process. But, uh, but it sounds like you guys have the Rolodex. <laughs> so, so, they do, so they do cultural programming as well? Yeah, they have mm -hmm. specific programs for a variety of, uh, like there's so many of them, I don't mm -hmm. even know. It's hard to name all yeah. of them, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. there's quite a few. We have some of it in our lounge. We have literature, so you can right, stop yeah. by. <laughs> right. Come on Anyone's by. welcome to stop by. Yeah. We'll hand out some brochures. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, so who would be at the, I know Anne Mis Miskin is at the city. And they Joyce Hunter. Yeah. And Joyce, yes. Are they the main contacts at the city for That's most of what you're doing mm -hmm. with? Mm -hmm. right. And so behind, besides the Friendship Center, then the city, there's a few others that, uh, again, that get a picture. If, if you were to have that trades, that trade hmm. fair. Yeah, we should have brought our list. I'm um, we would have the, 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 the Aboriginal way. liaison from the city police as well. Right. Darren okay. Prince. That's been around for a while, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is, is it? Mm -hmm. It's a pretty solid connection for you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. They come in our office once a week or a couple times uh, every couple of weeks. They are they're in our area. Just mm -hmm. to now. I, speaking of which, I just I, mm -hmm. you, Bob and Joe gave me some pictures. So for the guys in the studio, if they haven't fallen asleep, because <laughs> they don't have anything to do, <laughs> uh, I put up a picture of Jerry, and there's a police officer. I would be Darren, yeah. That's Darren. So who's Darren? Darren Prince is one of the Aboriginal liaison He's officers. There's another picture I can pop up here for them. Uh, Jerry's a, I can't remember Jerry's last name. Jerry Martin. Martin, mm -hmm. right. So he's a he's an elder, yeah. traditional elder teacher. Um, so is is Darren an Aboriginal person? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, did just I don't know. I, I haven't asked him. Yeah. But yeah. Right. So the, the connection with the... Uh, Again, I kind of got the impression over the past few years that that liaison, the police, and that that they're that they're the one because they're on the front lines, right, of a lot of the social conflict that happens mm -hmm. in, in Thunder Bay. Um, and I gather, to some extent, again, this is just from reading the paper and things of that sort, that they've taken a certain initiative in, in trying to say, well, th th these aren't crime problems necessarily; these are social issues that need to be dealt with. We're not necessarily the best people to be dealing with some of this. Is that your impression? I don't know if you've had much dealings with uh, them on that side, or if um, we kind of just invite them to our events, and oh. um, if students have issues and they want to talk to somebody, that's the person that we go to. So that's mm -hmm. how our relationship functions. And then I think on their part, they want to be seen in and in and around the community as a positive 
Mm-hmm. Um, right. As opposed to just the guy yeah, who's as a, as coming to arrest only you for something. Yeah, as opposed to when there's something bad happening. So I, I think that's why we're working so well together is that right. it works well for both of us. Right. But uh, the the fact that it's not always just a criminal issue. That, yeah, that there are social want... issues, which you guys are, in, in essence, I gather, dealing with uh, the social side of, of well, as you say, people coming from one culture into another. And sometimes that creates conflict. Sometimes that creates disturbances. And sometimes, and I gather, to some extent, your role is to smooth that out. We're there to connect them with whatever services they might need. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So just to be that person that helps them mm. in any way that right. we can. <laughs> right. Right. Well, sometimes it's just a matter of they just need somebody to talk to. Yeah. Well, I, th- th- you refer to the fact, for example, of creating that cultural space, which mm-hmm. is familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, how how easy or difficult is that in a place like, you know, uh, an educational institution that was not originally built with those sorts of objectives? We need more space. <laughs> oh, really? I'm right. just going to say that. Okay, no, there you go. Go for it. There you go. Um, I no. think that our space functions well. It would be nice if it was bigger, but... Well, in what sense? It was just because there's because it's super busy now. We have, right. I mean, when we first started in November, it wasn't too bad. Um, but we have so many students coming in now that sometimes it's hard to find a seat. So it would mm. just be nice to have now, more is this room. A, is, now I do pop in myself uh, from time to time. Is it when uh, when there's special events, or, is, or just certain times Could of the day? Be any kind of day. Right. <laughs> we never know. Right. Friday mornings are usually our only little bit of quiet that we have so far. I'd say. Eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. special events are, it's hit and miss depending on the students' schedules. Like obviously a big event like our fall feast that right. you had pictures of, those were, it was a busy day. We had over 150, I would guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Now that's, I can tell from the picture, that was out in the hall. or Out in the, the hall and trickles or, into right. Appuin. So right. all the seats in there were taken and then people were out mm-hmm. in the student um, commons. Do you know roughly what the population, Aboriginal population of Con College is? Um, we have a list that was compiled in August, late August, of self-identified students, and that number's over 600, but we know that the number's actually a lot higher because right. a lot of students registered late or probably aren't on that list because they So what would identify. that be as a percentage, roughly speaking? Roughly. About well, 25, I think, 25, oh. 27, yeah. something like that, maybe less. I think that's the number I've heard in one of my 25-ish. Videos. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I'm just kind of curious. Sure so the, the yeah. so it's a substantial part of the student population mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. is people who are in that, if you like, segment of the population. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's coming up? Yeah, we got off the track. We got the trade off. show. So when's yeah. when's that likely to be? Uh, we're hoping for end of November. Mm-hmm. Okay, so before the new year. Uh, we yes. will have a Christmas luncheon usually we have for the students Mm -hmm. we have a movie night coming up on friday Um, we'll have academic workshops and academic support since we're nearing that time when papers and midterms Mm -hmm. and everything are happening Um, we're waiting for the snow to fall because we purchased our snow shoes so we six pairs of snow shoes we hopefully uh, we'll get more and have a sign out sheet where as a group we can go out with our Mm -hmm. students and go Mm -hmm. into the Oh, the land aerial side mm-hmm. of the college. Mm-hmm. One of the bigger projects we're working on right now is to actually get a fire area as well, so we can do some more outdoor activities right. when it's colder. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> when I our yeah. Butts off. yeah when I first ar- arrived a few years ago, I, I kept uh, bugging Brenda about we we need to have a classroom and a canoe. I said <laughs> that uh, in other words, you know, get out those get outside those four walls and yeah. because. Oh, wow. uh, so maybe I should pitch, be pitching this to you guys. <laughs> well, we don't I mean, have the teepee right now. And we I got the, a well, we got a teepee. We got, sounds like we're going to get some snowshoes. Now there is a, now there is a, um, I don't know who it is. They do do canoe trips. Somebody does canoe trips. I remember I bumped into somebody in the hall and she had a poster up on, she was mm-hmm. teaching, I can't remember which department she went. And it was kind of an outdoors and they would I do trips up north. Hmm. Uh, so I was thinking, well, just put two and two together here. Uh, in other words, the, the, the point is that if, uh, the, as soon as you get into the canoe, that implies a certain culture, right? That you, around the, the activities and TV building. and So we haven't got there yet. We still have a ways to go. <laughs> to Because there's lots of bush out there. We don't have to go very far to find the bush. No. no. So, yeah. it, uh, so how do we put that curriculum together? Mm-hmm. Culture, yeah. culture guys. 
I suppose. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Would we have stuff. to have canoes? I, that, that's <laughs> the, <laughs> we don't water. have the budget for canoes. We, got, well, we, <laughs> we could fundraise, I suppose. Well, there you go. Or just, you know, I don't know. I have a, I have a canoe in my backyard. Think of all the backyards that have canoes. Loan, do, a, do, a, do a kind of lend us your canoe for a week or two. <laughs> We'll go up north? Yeah, or just... Sounds well, good. Well, well, we don't have... <laughs> well, it's, it's <laughs> the McIntyre River is like 100 right there. feet yeah. away. Yeah. And then you just scoot down there and you head out and go up the cam or <laughs> head up to Kakabaka Falls. Well, let's try to get a fire first. A yeah. fire <laughs> first. Okay, <laughs> fire <laughs> first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you fall in, we'll get yeah, okay. No, no. Well, okay. Well, I'm gonna, well, Baby I'm, I'm, Maybe I should do our to-do list. So I can bring you back on the show. Okay. How, how's that fire going? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, okay. Next let's thing, see. it's the canoes. We got the teepee. Mm -hmm. And then we have to have the itinerary for the canoes. See, there used to be a canoe rental place just down the McIntyre, but it's not. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Wild Waters thing. Mm -hmm. I used to rent there a few years ago. But uh, yeah, I would think because I used to, I I did teach the history of Aboriginal Canadian relations a, a couple years ago, one one mm -hmm. one iteration of it, and I that I posed the question in the class. So oh, how many and the hands all That's went up. up. Oh <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Classroom in a canoe. Well, I'd take the class, but <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's a bigger uh, college effort. Yeah, I, I think that goes back to the question of how easy is it to create that cultural space within the college and we are getting a lot of support but it I mean it takes time for these things mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. into effect you know you have to go through different um, departments and get approval and different levels so but we have received a lot of support with everything mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're doing but again we haven't even been here a year mm -hmm. yet so we're pretty happy we're going to get a fire area <laughs> so where is the fire area likely to be um well we, it's or? still not confirmed so oh, okay. I guess I'll have to keep it under wraps right. until it's oh, okay. official. Yes. No, that's <laughs> <what we're laughs> enough. Fair enough. Yeah, we're hoping it'll be uh right. As so we're hoping it would be near the teepee but probably not right out in front because we'd like to be a little Now bit when more you're saying a fire, I'm assuming this isn't just a couple of rocks in a or is it would that be just like a fire area. As in Enough to gather at least a, a class. Oh, yeah. okay. A large right. number yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we can yeah. have certain events. Similar yes. to what Lakehead has a couple of oh, they do? fire areas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Hmm. I mean, like you said, it's just with, with the canoe getting out outside the classroom, outside. Uh, well, as I say, the river is right there. Even if it's right there, let's get over for a little bit. Yeah. Right. You know, break up that. Uh, you know, classroom well, with well I just assume a certain curriculum kicks in. So, uh, you know, uh, when you're. When you're in a six-walled container, like we are right now, uh, and you're trying to talk about spirits and nature, or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. you're trying to talk about the stories. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have that feel to it. Well, y yeah. I mean, when I b when even when I just bicycle and go through the bush to get here, it's, it's you know, mm -hmm. and there's a deer and just munching away and. Uh, you just realize, oh, okay. I mean, the, the medicine wheel just makes a thousand times more sense, but it, it, it doesn't really make sense to talk about the medicine wheel in here because the seasonal cycles just don't seem apparent. Mm -hmm. But when you're kind of romping through the, the bush and the leaves are falling and the natural cycles of the season are taking place, the medicine wheel suddenly seems, oh, yeah, that's right. It's the story of up here. Mm -hmm. So... Classroom in a canoe. Okay, that's. Can we pencil <laughs> that in on the agenda? Yeah, once we is get our fire be, area. Is that next discussion? <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so, what's next? <laughs> that's what's that's next? my. I guess we could talk a little bit about recruitment and just our. Sure. Our new push to to allow students to know that there are Aboriginal Student Services here, and now we're named Nagonwin Aboriginal Student Services. So that was even something new. Um, and we have our fly sheets out. We have um, we developed a whole link on the website for a, a whole variety of different Aboriginal bursaries that are available. Mm. So we're really pushing that piece as well. Um, I think a lot of services were here that maybe weren't being. A lot, of, yeah, a lot of services that students didn't know about. A lot yeah. of staff still don't know, didn't about, know about Yeah, A lot of so. our faculty don't know that there are those services here that mm -hmm. uh, they can send their students to. So, so that's a huge revamp in, in that right. they're really, really uh, 
acknowledging all these services exist and, and uh, getting that information out there, which is wonderful. And we're really working on building our relationships with the high schools, both local and in the region. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned the website, and I guess does social media make it easier? We just got a Facebook group oh, uh, a few along. weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it and it has been pretty good, I think. Mm-hmm. Eh? Uh, before yeah, we would just email to the students, but I mean, everyone's on Facebook. Half everyone's. of the internet users are on Facebook, apparently. So Facebook and, and so yeah. do you have your own kind of web? We have our own group on Facebook. But you we don't have our oh, own website. Is that webs- what you were referring to when you mentioned website earlier? Oh no, we're oh. on the college website okay. under Naganawin. Oh okay. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Uh, Mm-hmm. So that's even new. Like we we didn't have our own website mm-hmm. a while ago. It's just been slow getting started, but now we're rolling along, and everyone's been very supportive of right. that and uh, looking for ways to kind of so help us. So be able us. to track the fire on on the website. Yes. <laughs> the agenda. Yeah, we start will doing that. <laughs> and can we put in proposals like for <laughs> classrooms in a canoe? On the hey, yeah. There you go. I, so I got to hit the Facebook page. That's that's mm-hmm. all right. Yeah. yeah, that's we announce every day. We try. What's going yeah, actually, on. I'm. What's going on? That's right too. I, I I am on the email list. I gather because uh, I get these regular emails from Darby Appowin and Chris Appowin <laughs> mm-hmm. and Bobby Joe Appowin. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and working. I, I, that's right. Um, We're famous. They they come pretty steady, so you guys are clearly active. Yeah. Um, yeah. So after the fire <laughs> and the recruitment, uh, and the trade show. <laughs> so we've got so much well, stuff Well, we're working. On. I guess OASA is just OASA now. They're trying to What's plan. What's OASA? Uh, the Native Student Council. Hey, okay. Um, so they are now just at the very beginning stages of trying to plan some, some bigger events and to just to be a little bit more visible. So they are looking at uh, what so far is coined as their Christmas extravaganza. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) We'll see how that goes. But, um, you know, they want to have an opportunity to publicly kind of unveil the work they're doing with their constitution and with the council. We're hoping to have some some external public figures come in to to Mm. kind of congratulate them and see them on their way with that. Um, Incorporated into that, they're looking at planning some on-campus family activities. So, um, you know, uh, so it, OASA is a exists at this point is. in time, and it has a membership, and uh, mm-hmm. that is a, so they could come on here and talk they about. They certainly it. could. Oh, <laughs> all right. See, I'm uh, speaking of have. recruitment. See, I'm 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 always in recruitment mode as there well from go. the show, and it's good. Yeah, and okay, you know, they're a yeah. good group of young people uh, working really hard and really dedicated to trying to make it a better place for students and for all students, but mm-hmm. uh, but really looking to create a positive and useful mm-hmm. service. Mm-hmm. 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 So. Uh, 22 minutes. <laughs> this hour has 22 <laughs> minutes left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I guess but, one thing we could talk uh, about kind of is p- people often ask us what we do that's different than other student support mm-hmm. services and just the informal nature of our area. Um, it kind of allows us to build a rapport with the students that mm-hmm. is really essential in keeping them in the college. I think that's the biggest retention piece. So a lot of the students that we see every day, it might just be to say hi. And you right. know what? This is how I did on my test today. And we just happen to be the yes, people. Yes, <laughs> and I can appreciate that as an instructor because you don't always have that opportunity for FaceTime, if you like, mm-hmm. With mm-hmm. relationship building with students because you're doing your... Your stand up at the front and trying to r- race through your curriculum and 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 all of that and you you know other than a little hello at the beginning and actually uh, taking attendance is your chance to have a little chit chat around the room, mm-hmm. uh, which is you know. Well, I mean, we really get to know our students on a personal right. personal level. We exactly, know and, and they know. And that's such an important part of the, of partly being in that age group, partly mm-hmm. as I said, coming from a remote community where you knew everybody and here you don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. And and as an instructor, as I see, you kind of worry about that you realize you just can't form, you don't have the circumstance to form that relationship, you're delivering collect exactly. curriculum. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's you, so you're seeing that that's an important factor for you guys. Oh, that's, huge. A huge that's a huge factor. That's a huge, huge mm-hmm. factor, um, that trust and, and relationship building. And uh, I was you know, saying, um, I know about their life, they know about my life, they know my children, their names and what they do, and, and, and just about, you know, speaking with them and getting to know them. 
-hmm. when they don't show up for a day or two, we start to worry, hey, where's so-and-so? Mm -hmm. Well, and going? this is what happens at my end, right? I just, there's just an empty seat and I don't know the story. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have the opportunity to, and, and, there's, and there's a difference, and we know, sometimes we know that story, and that's yeah. why we need to have that connection with faculty or any of the support staff and, mm -hmm. uh, to say, hey, how can we accommodate, how can we help this, uh, this student who you know, we haven't seen or, or what's happening? So right. we have to have that open line of communication and, and mm -hmm. back and forth. And I think it's a gap. That is, it's, it's, a, it's an issue that, um, as I say, from an instructor's point of view, I, I kind of presume that's my experience is a, a, a large experience across the board at the college, mm -hmm. or at, at any sort of mm -hmm. institute, especially post-secondary. Trying to close where, that gap, that's, yeah. Well, and I guess what I'm getting at is that on the one hand, your services are meant and intended to deliver um, resources to particular students in particular circumstances, but in fact, <laughs> that's probably a resource a lot of students could, uh, could enjoy the benefits of. Mm -hmm. In other words, it maybe should be more broadly available. And it is thrilled to college. They right. have our student... Uh, student success advisors. Um, yeah. So they're at every school. So there's one for the business and community. They're attached to each yeah. school, and they do similar things to us yeah. in terms of... I, uh, yeah, I don't think they get to do as much as the social just because no. they don't have the... So, like, it really well, functions well for us to be off the social space, right? Right. And that's what I'm mm -hmm. sort of, I guess, getting at, is for most students coming to a college or a university, for that matter, your interaction is through the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's your primary interaction with uh, the institution. Uh, a few administrators mm -hmm. at the beginning and at the end or whatever, and then it's your instructors. Um, and the really, in other words, I guess what I'm getting at is that the traditional post-secondary education is not designed to be a social space. Uh, and that may be, yeah. yeah, and that may be a problem. Mm -hmm. Stand other, up and deliver is how it used yeah, to be. Yeah, that's right. And, 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 and uh, what you guys are mm -hmm. part of is a transformation of that um, within at least the Aboriginal segment of the student population. But maybe it's a model that should be should be broadened to the the whole institution. There you go. As if your workload was not large <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bigger space, more resources. There you go. Yeah. yeah. No, it def it definitely works, and I'm sure it would work in the whole within the whole college and and that's probably something they are transitioning towards maybe I, maybe we're the test subjects I don't know but uh, it is working well for us anyway well and I wonder to what extent it does represent a different approach to education mm -hmm. that just the traditional <coughs> for want of a better term European approach to education is mm -hmm. you you go and you sit in a cubicle in a row and you you get mm -hmm. something thrown at you and then you get tested and out the door you go and and that's basically what it you know that's that's what my schooling was mm -hmm. from kindergarten up more or less mm -hmm. Um, so is, you know, on one hand that this may be a different model of, of education uh, that we should consider. Yeah, I feel like our approach is very student driven and I think mm -hmm. the college is working towards that as what do the students need, what do the students want and mm -hmm. that kind of thing we're instead of... Yeah, mm -hmm. We're starting to see if, uh, a lot of uh, our faculty in the Aboriginal programs are starting to do what you're talking about getting out of the classroom. I know there's a, there's a, I know mm -hmm. there's two or three right now that are going to different places within Thunder Bay in the community and, and talking about the subject matter and, 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 and talking with each other. And, and that's how they're teaching the class mm -hmm. instead of being in the class. What about feedback from students about what their experiences are in this kind of context? Do you get much? Do you have a sense that the students that you're interacting with appreciate this space? Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the Absolutely. Yes, yeah. that is, I mean, the whole, th what, the, what you're doing at, at the college as opposed to what other people are doing. You know, it's nice to hear past students who come, who come back for a visit, not just because mm -hmm. to see us, but just, hey, I haven't been at the college for a while, and they say, well, this is happy when? Wow, well, I remember when I was on the third floor in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. enjoy it and they appreciate it. I think, mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. definitely think the students... Mm. Uh, enjoy the space. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I think we're seeing too a lot of second or third year students are meeting first year students and actually right. bringing them to Happy Win yeah. and making yeah, that sure that they me know of, it's there. Yes, that reminds me of the conversation I had with Cynthia Wesley Eskimo, who's uh, the vice provost of Aboriginal Learning mm -hmm. over at the, at the university. And she's very keen on that sort of mentoring relationships mm -hmm. between older and younger students, and that that was a key part of the relationship building. Uh, well, and also just the motivation and the development of this. You student. see a lot of that in there. I mean, yeah. the, and partly because it is a combination of social and academic, where 
they will have a conversation and somebody will overhear who is you know older or been through that program and and they do help each other and we're finding that it's a really good way for them to make those connections whereas if they were in say just the library where you're expected to be you know more quiet and you stay away they might not they could go through a whole two years of college and never meet someone who's been in the program before right so i think in that sense it's a really mm -hmm. good thing for the students to find those resources amongst themselves as well mm -hmm. I've seen a big increase in that since mm -hmm. last year. I think, again, we just have more students using our space, and now our first-year students mm -hmm. that were there last year are second years, and they're returning. And there's a lot of peer mentoring, unofficial peer yeah. mentoring going on there. And, like, we haven't created it. We were looking at creating a program, but we haven't actually mm -hmm. had the resources to do that yet, and they're kind of doing it on their own. So it's right. wonderful to see. Well, one of the things that I, I mentioned to Cynthia was that, you know, when I, I've never seen anything on my course outline that said, Develop, uh, develop deliverables that will encourage mentorship between students or different uh, uh, stages of a program. I'm in a two, uh, teaching in a two-year program, so there's nothing that's, that that's, uh, encourages me to try to create a situation where senior students are helping junior students, but maybe that should be figured out. Mm -hmm. Maybe there should be a way that that can... There you go, another thing to put on, yeah. put on the <laughs> list the to-do to to -do list. Um, so, wow, that 14 minutes left. <laughs> um, what haven't we discussed? Uh, I'm actually looking down the list you sent, uh, the first thing, that agency trade, yeah, that we've actually t hit on just about everything, the, the, the list you sent me mm -hmm. of things to talk about. So is there anything we haven't? Sure. Oh, sure. we also have Louis Riel Day coming up oh. as well. Oh. Um, and one thing that we have at the college this year that we didn't have last year is that we have infinite reach facilitators. So infinite reach facilitators um, are part of the Métis Nations initiative. Yeah, I saw the brochure for that. Yeah. Infinite reach. So they are students in our post-secondary institution who are Métis citizens, and they are working together to deliver cultural events and cultural resources and help connect students with different resources within the college. They're kind of little navigators, actually. Mm -hmm. There you go, for the Métis students. So mm -hmm. they're going to plan an event in collaboration with us for Louis Riel Day. The day actually is a Saturday, but we're going to do it on the Friday, the 14th. So is there a separate organization for Métis students at the college? Um, it's not, it's not, not like a WASA. It's just okay. that they, they, uh, they apply to Métis Nation to become infinite reach facilitators, and this oh, year we okay. happen to have three. And oh, last year I don't think we had any, so... Oh, okay. They're going to work together to right. to right. kind of deliver that. So this so. is, and that's so that's kind of new. Um, I'm not sure how long Métis Nation has been doing it for. Oh, I know okay. Lakehead had one last year, mm -hmm. so, but it's new to us at least. Mm -hmm. as so the Louis Riel Day is generally no November 14th. And it'll it, be on the Friday. It'll be on the Friday before. And, and it'll likely involve. Um, usually, like last year, we had a display of just uh, Métis culture, so different uh, information. We had fiddle music playing. We had Senator Bob McKay come in and, and kind of tell the story of Louis Riel Day and why it was important. And then actually last year, the college was presented with a Métis Nation flag that uh, we had a ceremonial raising of the flag as well. Mm. So I'm not sure what they have planned for us this year, mm -hmm. but I'm excited to see the, the youth being involved. Right. Well, there's another show. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. we can get so you their names. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, yes. I think that's. I'm going to have to head over to you guys on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So, what should I do for the? <laughs> what would be a good show? Because you guys do seem to have a. I guess that's an important thing to mention too. Is when instructors are looking for resources or looking to connect with those resources, that's what we're here for as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, just from our experience. Yeah, you no. Know, I was sitting in a meeting the other day, and how can we? Um, how can we incorporate, the, one of the questions is how can we incorporate the Aboriginal content and culture within our classrooms and and I was sitting in, in this space and someone said, well, I was thinking, why don't they come to us? And, right. you know, we, we know we work with our students. And yes. kind of, so the fact that they yeah. come to us and, and, mm -hmm. and like Darby said, we have the experiences. Yeah, we right. all, like, well, and some are starting because yeah. I, I did, was act, I was actually just approached and, and right. went and did a presentation for a marketing class who was trying oh, okay. to uh, right. develop a... Because the Aboriginal learning objective is relatively new and mm -hmm. I can imagine yes. there's a lot of people around the college. Mm -hmm. Like I'm actually, well, you know, I taught the history course. Mm -hmm. I come from a background mm -hmm. that I'm very open and, and very keen. Some, some people might be saying, oh, I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to do this. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. um, 
So I could imagine that, in fact, I'd sort of suggested to Brenda at one point, Brenda's small, I guess I should, it's the, it used to be the dean of Nagano, now is, is involved with the Center for, I never remember all the uh, all policy, policy average average and learning. I know the four, <laughs> I know the five words, I can never remember which order they're in. Um, the, um, the, um, I just forgot what I was going to say. Learning outcomes. The learning outcomes of their new learning. faculty. Yes, um, that we should have a, a some sort of gathering of, of little, you know, s uh, informal gathering of faculty. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing it? How are you doing it? How are you doing it? And sort of share, share information. But it sounds like you guys would be a perfect kind of pivot point there and I just keep adding to your job <laughs> description. <laughs> well we have a lot of experience between the three of us yes. in different fields so um, Chris and I were both teachers in Aboriginal schools so mm -hmm. I mean we've been incorporating Aboriginal outcomes into curriculums for a while and Bobby Joe comes to us with lots of well, I wonder if we need a kind of a some kind of general resource like I don't know like a website or something where that would, that would, would be awesome well, and that's right probably what they're working on I know right now the library there they, oh, have, they have Lisa. A great, yeah Lisa Jack she has a, a, a great Aboriginal resource on on their website yes so I would direct a lot of the you know, right, right that right. way as well mm -hmm. and we should mention too that they put on a great PD session in the spring last year yes I for staff that. and yes. we were asked to present at it which we were really happy to do and uh, so mm -hmm. there I there are lots of efforts being made to kind of mm -hmm. get staff familiar with it it wasn't mandatory and maybe that's one thing like it, the people who bought into it I'm sure got a lot out of it it's just nice to see the conversation starting yeah. and right and exactly continuing on and continuing and, and hopefully it grows and grows mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and more people ask questions and they're not afraid to ask right. the questions and right well and I guess that my my feeling about this is after 150 years of colonialism we don't have any blueprint we're trying to actually create uh, something that doesn't right. exist yeah. Right? I mean, it's not like we can go back 150 years and there's our curriculum sitting there somewhere that we can just, it's a, we, we kind of have to be creative at the same time as we're rediscovering that connection. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, it is a, an open conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think students are picking up on that as well and they're really appreciative of it. Um, mm -hmm. I know even just we had maps at our session of uh, from Nan Legal, I think, right? Yeah. Of different northern communities in Ontario. And we handed those out to instructors and they hung them on their walls. And that made a huge difference for some mm -hmm. students just to be able to yeah. see. Visualize what Yeah, what and the I know, story same is. for me, when I went to school down south, I couldn't see my hometown on a map anywhere. Right. And it yeah. does make a difference. So I mm -hmm. think that, I think there's been a lot of positive response. And Conversation we are starter, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, where are you from? And, and they'll show mm -hmm. me on the map here. Mm -hmm. So I have those in the classroom, and we'd like to have something like that throughout all the classrooms in the Yeah, college. we'd like to get a college-branded map of our own so we can kind of distribute that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here are the communities that we service. Mm -hmm. Right, which is, an, which is fairly enormous. I mean, mm -hmm. when you think of it, Northern Ontario is two-thirds well, of Ontario. You know, we have people from, we have students from Quebec who, who right. are attending. You know, so it's, yeah. it's all over, but it'd be nice to have some representation of, of the students. And well, that just, uh, do you... Like obviously education, although you, as you say, with some of it is federally funded and such, it's provincial. So that that boundary between Quebec and Ontario, as as far as the Ministry of Educations are concerned, is pretty strict, I imagine. But obviously, people, the communities are not. I mean, hey, they can choose well, a school that they want to, and if they get funded to that school, then hey. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, you're not in. You're not dealing with just uh, Northern Ontario students. Mm -hmm. no. Oh no. no, no, no. We have students from out west and students from the east and students from down south, all over. Yep. Uh, I say a lot of our students come from the northern communities or mm -hmm. surrounding communities, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Robinson Superior, Treaty right. Nine, and Treaty Three. But I, I think we have quite a few <laughs> from different areas. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I guess one of, one of the things I was talking to Cynthia about as well is the idea of getting curriculum to come from the communities as opposed to just delivering in other words that they're uh, do you have any sense of that that and by curriculum coming from the communities I mean that um, well that they have their own stories that the, just as you're saying you're, that they're on the map they're part of the story that the college is trying to ultimately tell in other words they're at a community level eh? and, and mm -hmm. I know that's happening there's within the community there's lots of resources coming out recently um, 
But I mean, again, it's up to the instructors to kind of access that information. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure the communities are willing to uh, provide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it was, well, I guess that's one of the things that I find uh, just during the show and even before was just being aware of what's out there. Mm -hmm. And so that, that the organizations, even in uh, Thunder Bay or mm -hmm. in the regions, and it's as if th there's, a, th th there's a need for, um, I, I guess, in the contemporary world of the internet and everything, you sort of think there should be a website that's, that lists everybody and tells you what they're doing and you could, you could interact with them and th through such um, social media. I mean, we now do have that kind of technology. 20 years ago, it didn't exist. But now it's relatively straightforward and everybody seems to have it. So there's another project, the website <laughs> for that. All right, well, five minutes left. Anything we didn't talk about? You haven't talked for a while. Yeah, you've been quiet. Yeah, you've been pretty quiet. I think you, the five, last five minutes belong to you. We're just going to... No, 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 we're I, just I gonna, got your bag, Mom, George. We're just going to... Let's try it again. Uh, geez, I don't know. Um, I mean, what, I we can we just could, We I can know. just sit, sit here and meditate on the fire. <laughs> Yeah, really. Well, in the meantime, we're trying to utilize the TP a yeah. bit more. We have right. tea outside every Wednesday. Oh, that's um, nice. I haven't made it for that yet. It's been growing. It started off yeah. with maybe one student, and now we're getting <laughs> quite a few. So yeah. the yeah, weather's been nice too on every yeah. every yeah, Wednesday. That has. Mm. And we're looking at having the TP continue throughout the winter. It's taken down mm. before the snow fell, and and Howard Twans, he's with uh, Seven Generations, and there's a group of yeah. us and some students that helped out to raise the TP. We like to see that continue on throughout mm -hmm. the winter. And, and it's secure enough, we feel anyway, that it could sustain the winter mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and have that all year Certainly long. Certainly a nice symbol, right? Oh, it's a beautiful symbol. Yeah. And to have that all year long and have the students and, um, and, and the, the fire classroom and, 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 <laughs> and maybe some classes can go out there. and Fire, yeah. a teepee, and a canoe. Yeah, yeah our hope is that the classrooms want to use those as well, yeah. right? Like. Our hope with the fire area and with the TVs right. is that the classrooms mm -hmm. are utilizing those and that hmm. gets you outside. Oh, okay. Because I know for sure that's the Nagano nice. program. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's uh, an engagement piece in terms of you know taking care of the TP, so shoveling right, 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 right. and you know maybe gathering. Of course, in, inside the TP, we wouldn't use uh, uh, wood or wood fire. I don't think at this no, point. No. Well, I remember we went out to the Fort William. Uh, sorry, the old fort. Fort William, yeah, and no, of had, course. And, yeah. and they had a fire going in there, and we were sweating. Oh, of course, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Holy smokes, it was, it was nice. Mm -hmm. But it, you, you think, and this was in the winter time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was late. It was late in November or something. It was getting well. I don't it think wasn't January, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying. They probably to have to get a special permit to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah there you go. Eh? <laughs> we'll be happy with just a fire area that respects the city codes. <laughs> yes, yes. But, uh, but we are hoping to do more outdoor things too, um, mm -hmm. like working with hides and um, mm -hmm. if we get some geese this spring, maybe smoking some geese outside if the fire area does happen. So we, right. we know the people that can make that happen. So it's, it's on our agenda. Okay. I mean, we got some great support here. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, again, I'm we're starting to imagine possibilities. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we found a lot of support at the college and... Uh, the senior team's very appreciative of the space and, and wants to see it succeed, so that's been really wonderful for oh. us. And the more that we do, the more engaged and active the students are becoming, and they're, they're wanting to help, and they're wanting to do all of this and see it happen. So, I mean, that's a big difference, too, mm -hmm. when they feel like something that they do actually has a long-term effect, and it's going to be there for, for the next round of students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, to just cultivate that that idea, which a lot of them, I think, unfortunately, they feel like they're isolated in the, in the institution, and it's just about them and their their academic career. And in fact, they're part of a larger generational process, right? And to mm -hmm. to cultivate those relationships. One minute left. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just want to say that I hope we keep growing, and I hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the team stays together mm -hmm. and we keep on doing the things no, we sounds like do. you're on the right path <coughs> for sure we all have a uh, we all have a, our visions and we're all on the same page on what we can do and what we think should be done so hopefully yeah. hopefully we can do those things mm -hmm. yeah and we really want to encourage people to come down and visit with us uh, people from so the yeah so Appawin is a, a lounge area it's in the Shunya building the main building of the college I guess if you're coming on the bus it's right where the bus is stop so just walk in the front door walk down the hall and 
Upper Wynwood, uh, a place to sit. A place to sit. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is right. So thank you to Darby Starrett, uh, Chris Pace, and Bobby Joe Chenier. Thanks. This thank has you. been Spirit Canoe, and thank you for tuning in. My name is Bob Gujon. See you next week. You're listening to Confederation College Radio, the sound from the pound.